Hello my schoolers you're welcome to my school YouTube channel my name is Emmanuel and today we'll be looking at kinetic theory of matter and gas laws in chemistry please don't go anywhere stick around and we'll be right back You welcome back to my school YouTube channel. Like I said earlier on, today we'll be looking at kinetic theory of matter and gas laws. And under this, we'll be talking about states of matter. We'll be looking at change of states of matter. We'll be looking at phenomena supporting kinetic theory, talking about diffusion, talking about osmosis. Also, we'll be looking at assumptions of kinetic theory of gases. We'll be looking at the gas laws, the Boyle's law, the Charles law, the Graham's law, Dalton's law, and so on. We'll be looking at molar volume and atomicity of gases. And lastly, we'll be looking at the ideal gas equation, which is PV equals to NLT. Now let's get down to it. State of matter. You recall that in our previous video lesson, we talked about matter being anything that has mass. And occupy space and there are three states of matter everything that exists exists in three states we say we have those that exist as solids substances that exist as liquid and those that exist as gaseous substances so which means we have three states of matter solid liquid and gases what is kinetic theory of matter it talks about dealing with the way in which the arrangement of the particles of a substance can determine the properties of the substance and in particular the state in which the substance is likely to be found under some certain given conditions we talk about solid we talk about liquid we talk about gases the arrangement of the particles or molecules that make up the substance in that state how does it affect the property of that particular substance? Let's look at the next slide. Solids. In solids, the particles or atoms are closely packed together. The force that binds the molecules of the solid together is very strong. The molecules or particles in solids, they have no freedom of movement at all because they are closely packed together. So even if there's any vibration that can take place between the molecules that held them together, for sure, there is no freedom for them to begin to move here and there. So, however, they show or exhibit vibrational motion about their main position. They have definite shape. When you see a cube, you can tell, oh, this is a cube because it has a definite shape. When you see a cuboid, you can say, oh, this is a cuboid because it has a definite shape. So... And they have also definite volume. You can say, oh, this is the quantity of this. Oh, it is in cm cube. It is in meter cube and so on. So that they have a specific and definite volume as well. Solid substances, they have high density. Don't forget, density has to do with the mass of that substance, the ratio of the mass of the substance to the volume which it occupies. So their densities are usually high because of their masses. So when a solid melts, there is usually little change in the volume when it melts. For instance, if you have a candle wax and then you melt it, you have the, the, the volume having a change in volume a little But don't forget that the, the particles have been transformed from what it was before into another state. But yet, just a slight change could actually occur. Let's move on to the next slide. Liquids. In liquid, particles are relatively spaced out. Because the forces that bind the particles or molecules together is not as strong as those ones that bind the solids together. That is why we discover that the force that binds the particles together are not as strong as those ones in solid. Because the particles that hold the solid uh, substances together actually are so strong that the molecules or the particles cannot move around. They don't have freedom to move. But in this case now, this one, the, 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 the forces are not as strong as we have in the solid. So particles or ions have little freedom 
of movement because they are not strongly held together like in solids. So this one, the particles, the molecules, actually have little freedom to move, you know, here and there. So the molecules could move very short distance. The liquid have definite volume but no definite shape because they only assume the shape of the container in which you pour them. If you get water now, you pour it into a cylindrical, you know, you know, container. It will assume the shape of that cylinder. If you pour the same quantity of water into a cubic, you know, container, it's going to assume the shape of that cubic. So it we say that they don't have a definite shape, but they assume the shape of the container in which they are kept. So the liquid boils at a temperature when the vapor pressure of the liquid is equal to the atmospheric pressure. That is when we talk about boiling. The atmospheric pressure must be equal to the vapor pressure. That is where boiling takes place. So at that point, on changing to gas, there is a large change in volume because more of the particles would have been evaporated, would have vaporized during boiling. The, what, the vapor, you see it going and then the volume will be reduced. Let's look at the next slide. The third state of matter are the gases. In gases, the particles or molecules are widely spaced out, unlike the solids and then the liquids. The force that binds the molecules of the matter together is very weak, such that the molecules have greater freedom of, mo of movement. They can move you know, colliding with each other, colliding with one another, and then with the wall of the container in which they are kept. They are always moving at a very high speed. So they could move about freely in space. Gases have no definite shape and volume. Remember, solids have definite shape and definite volume. Liquids have definite volume, okay? And then they are shaped. They assume the shape of the container in which they are. But in case of gases, they have no definite shape and volume. So we say gases have no definite shape and volume. So gas molecules move about randomly, colliding with one another and with the walls of the container in which they are kept in. Let's go to the next slide. Change of states of matter. How do substances in liquid form or matter in liquid form, how do they change to gaseous state? How do once in gaseous state, how do they change to solid state? So we are looking at the transformation, the change in their different state. If we have liquid, for instance, you know, you boil your water and then the water initially was in liquid state and then as it begins to boil, you see vapor going out. That vapor eventually is in gaseous state, okay? So we say evaporation is taking place because there's transformation from liquid to solid. So that process is referred to as evaporation. We can have a situation where the gaseous substance is getting back or to form liquid again. When the, you know, uh, the boiling, you know, water, okay, the vapor that is supposed to escape is being trapped. And then once the temperature is reduced or the source of heat is removed, what happens? The, the lid that is on top of that begins to what? The vapor will condense underneath the lid and then it begins to fall the liquid back. That happens when you boil your water, your kettle or those that cook their soup, you see it, they put it so that it will, you know, keep the vapor and then the vapor will get, you know, condensed back. So in that process, we say we have condensation. So gaseous substance changing back to liquid, the process is called condensation. And we can have also liquid changing to solid. Look at your water, just like we have here. If you put this water in a refrigerator or in a freezer, for instance, you discover that what happens? The, so the liquid substance or the liquid water will begin to what? Form into ice. That ice is a solid. You can hold it because it has a definite shape. It has a definite volume. So we can have it. So that process, we say it is freezing, okay? Because we put it in the freezer or the temperature eventually reduces. And then what happens? We have it as freezing process. And then we can have the solid also forming back or changing back to liquid. We say that is melting because the solid is actually changed into, you know, liquid form. And then we can have also a solid substance changing to gas without first changing to liquid. That is a very, you know, common question you have in JAMP and then in Y question. They ask that the process through which solid substance changes or transforms into a gaseous state without changing to liquid first is called dash. 
you just tell us it's what sublimation you know you can ask so what are the substances that we have there's what we call naphthalene naphthalene is a scientific name okay because it's an organic substance but usually they call it camphor maybe you've seen this before you have them those white balls you have them these white balls okay they are camphor some persons put it in their clothes just to make the clothes have a good fragrance and then to you know ensure that that uh, uh, temperature is kept so this is an example of a substance that can transform from solid state to gaseous state because this is a solid okay when you leave it for some time you discover that what you can't see it no longer it doesn't have to change or melt into liquid you just discover that it's not there so it has sublime we also have the air freshener okay we use it in our rooms in our cars in our this it is on somewhere and then it is in solid form and then it changes and transforms into gaseous state and we can also have gaseous substances changing back to solid way we call that deposition we call it deposition so whichever state that a substance exists it can be transformed from one form to another. Remember the law of conservation of energy? It says that matter can never, neither be created nor destroyed, but it can be transformed from one form to another. So gases can be changed to liquid, liquid can change to solid, and so on and so forth. Let's move on to the next slide now. There are assumptions of kinetic theory about a perfect gas or an ideal gas. When we talk about an ideal gas, we are talking about, you know, the normal way the usual way that gases are expected to behave but you know that there is actually no ideal situation in the world but we talk about the real gas so we'll be talking about the real gases and then we'll look at what the ideal gases but we want to look at what are the assumptions that were made okay of kinetic theory about perfect gas or what we refer to as an ideal gas number one the gas molecules move in straight line at great speed colliding with each other and with the walls of the container okay we talked about when we looked at the characteristics of gaseous uh, molecules before we said that they don't have a definite volume but they collide with themselves and then they assume the shape of the container the cylinder in which you have them so the gas molecules are always moving on straight line and as they move on straight line at a very great speed that's why you discover if you try to open you know your your domestic you know gas cylinder the one you use in cooking you hear that sound that is the sound so because the molecules are always at high speed so they want to escape so once you open it you have it at that so they are always moving in a straight line the molecules and then at a very great speed and what are they doing they are colliding with themselves and with the world of the content that's why you discover that explosion of gases is very 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 flammable and very rapid it could happen and a lot of things can happen the second you know assumption about kinetic theory is the actual volume occupied by the gas is negligible compared with the volume of its container the actual volume occupied by the gas is negligible when you compare it with the volume of the container itself even when you feel it there the volume that the gas entire gas occupies in the in the container is not as much as that's why we say it is negligible okay when you compare it with the volume of the container we see also that the third assumption of kinetic theory is the forces of attraction and repulsion between the gas molecules is negligible the force of attraction and repulsion between the gas molecules is negligible they won't stick together they will always eat at each other and then collide with the walls of the they can't stay together so the force of attraction and repulsion between the gas molecules is very very small almost as if you know it doesn't exist that's why we say it is negligible the fourth theory says that the average kinetic energy of the gas molecules measures the temperature of the gas i'll say that again the average kinetic energy remember Kinetic energy is energy in motion in your physics. We are told that energy that is expressed by a body when it is in motion is what we call kinetic energy. So the average kinetic energy of the gas molecules measures the temperature of the gas. What it means is that it is what? Proportional. Okay. The average kinetic uh, energy is directly proportional to the temperature of the gas. So it means that as temperature increases, the kinetic energy should also increase that is what it means 
And as kinetic energy decreases, the average kinetic energy decreases, the temperature of that gas will also decrease. That's why you see those people that dispense gas, they always have water or sand around them so that they can cool the container of that the cylinder in which that gas is actually filled so that it does not cause the molecules to what to keep colliding and cause an explosion okay so the average kinetic energy of the gas molecules is directly proportional to the temperature of the gas the last assumption of the kinetic you know theory about how an ideal gas should behave is the collision between the gas molecules is perfectly elastic perfectly elastic the collision between the gas molecules colliding with themselves is perfectly elastic now we've come to the end of the preview of this video lesson if you want to have access to the full video please click on the link in the description below that takes you to the my school website where you have access to the full video and in the full video we'll be talking about the gas laws the Boyce law the Charles's law the Avogadro law and so on and so forth i believe you enjoyed this video lesson if yes please don't forget to click on the like button hit the subscribe button and tap on the notification bell which notifies you of our next video lesson once they are uploaded